Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to question number 45 from your SBR revision kit this question is uh, a different type of question because this question has those standards which are usually not covered the small small standards so and you will not see the questions uh, repeated like this questions I have not seen in the recent in the previous questions some of the standard so it's a unique question for example here you have IFRS 1 then we have IES 23 we have IFRS for SMEs which usually does not come okay but you have to be prepared for the standard because if it comes then it comes on you it comes with a lot of marks so A is regarding IFRS for SME standard okay and let's read the first requirement in accordance with IS 23 and IS 38 advise the directors on how the borrowing cost and the research and development should be accounted for one is regarding borrowing the other one is regarding research and development expenditure for eight marks second is discuss how the two transactions would be dealt under the SME standard okay first one is in based on full IFRS standard next one is on SME standard now when SME standard comes, you should know the difference with the uh, from the full life order standards. Okay, there are three areas that could be uh, that you could be tested on when it comes for SMS from uh, sorry SME standard. That is omissions. What are the omissions under SME standard? Under full life order standard, it will be there, but for SME standard, there will be some omissions, some standards which are not applicable. That you have to know. The other one are simplifications. What are the simplifications under the SME standard? And then, what else? Simplification, elimination, and sorry, omission, and one more is there. What is it? We'll go through that later. Okay. I'm not going to tell you. Okay find out what is the third one out of this three areas only you will be tested on SME from SME standard coming to B first requirement for B is discuss the key practical considerations and financial statement implications one is practical imp uh, consideration the other one are financial statement implications that an entity must consider when implementing a new IFRS standard okay for 10 marks okay so don't uh, get shocked when this question comes why because even though this was not asked in the previous question it's not asked does not mean that this standard will never be tested from me that is new IFRS standard Which standard is it IFRS 1 IFRS 1 even though this uh, standard is not tested very frequently very rare you can say so it came in the past as you can see it's there that means definitely you also have a chance of getting the standard okay second and it's for 10 marks I've told you when a standard comes which is not tested very frequently when it comes it comes with a heavy marks attached to it that's why it's very important that when you are going for SBR you need to know the whole syllabus all the standard you have to know it should be on your fingertips IFRS 1, IFRS 2, IFRS 3, IFRS 5, everything. So briefly, the next one is 3 marks. Briefly explain the principles outlined in IFRS 1 that must be applied when an entity adopts full IFRS for the first time. Okay, what are the principles? First one is regarding what are the considerations? Uh, what could be the issues when you are sw uh, switching to new IFRS standard? implementing a new IFRS standard from your previous standard now you're switching to IFRS standard there will be some issues right some considerations practical issues that will come which you need to take care of second one is just the principle from your IFRS one for three marks but for both the requirements you need the understanding of IFRS one that means total is 13 marks just for IFRS one and if you see this one 
this is okay your knowledge of is 23 and is 38 will give you eight marks but for this four marks you need the knowledge of ifrs versus and it's short also the case study is also not so long okay so let's read white box means the definition of small entity and these are the transactions first transaction yes they acquired a new machine which will be included as part of ppp ppe that means is 16 white box therefore commence construction of the machine on when did the construction started first of five 2006 as this continued until its completion which was after the year end of 31st may 2006 after the year end it was completed the direct cost were 2 million in feb 2000, 2016 and 1 million in each subsequent month until the year end white work has incurred finance cost on its general borrowings during the period which could have been avoided if machine had not been constructed white work has calculated that weighted average cost of borrowing from 1st of feb to 31st may on an annual basis is nine percent the cost of borrowing right this is per annum remember they are giving you for this you have to find out second one is they have incurred 1 million of research expenditure to develop a new product it incurred 0.5 million of development expenditure this is research 1 million is research 0.5 is development to bring another product to a stage where it is already to be marketed and sold because it says research and development cost okay the first one is regarding is 23 borrowing cost and the next one is your is 38 looking at the scenario okay because it's eight marks this eight marks is divided uh, among the two standard but more marks you'll be getting is for is 23 because here you need to do more working as you can see information is big where is is 38 you only have to tell research and development expenditure has been given to you you have to say just how to account for it so let's start let's start with the borrowing cost first okay when you are writing answers like this where you have two things in one requirement you have to use subheading so that examiner knows that this is borrowing cost and this is separately you are mentioning research and development so the first one okay and mention uh, maintain paragraphs like this one two three four paragraphs are here don't write everything in one okay calculation comes at the end do calculation at the end first explain the principle from the standard that's how you start an answer in sbr whenever you are given some numbers and you have to discuss start with the discussion part with and the best place is to start is with the principle from is 23 what is 23 says about this so define what is borrowing cost it requires the borrowing cost that is incurred when acquiring or constructing an asset to be capitalized you can capitalize that borrowing cost that means you can take that borrowing cost and add it it will be taken as the cost of an asset okay if the asset but only if the asset takes a substantial period of time to be prepared for its intended use or sale when an asset is under construction it's a very good example because assets which are under construction usually takes long time and if you are taking any loan on that to construct that asset it will take a long time so that borrowing cost you can capitalize it that means that borrowing cost will be no longer an expense it will be taken as cost of asset cost of that building that you're constructing okay so that's that will give you one mark second what is the second definition of borrowing cost includes what is the definition of borrowing cost what are the costs that are included in this borrowing cost first of all it is about capitalization what you can capitalize okay that borrowing cost incurred for constructing a building which takes a long time can be capitalized now we are talking about what are the borrowing cost under borrowing cost it includes interest expense because when you're taking a loan you have to pay an interest so that's an expense interest expense and how do you calculate it calculated by the effective interest method then we have finance charges on leases if you are taking it on a lease 
and exchange differences that arise from foreign currency borrowing. Maybe you are borrowing in a foreign currency. So exchange differences will come there relating to interest costs. Now, another mark. Third, how do you capitalize? And if you are not capitalizing, then what are the things that has taken that has to be taken as expenses you are going to write in third and finally you are going to calculate so borrowing cost should be capitalized during construction after construction if any cost is there you cannot capitalize only during until you uh, construction is taking place okay during that period whatever the cost is there the borrowing cost you can capitalize it and include the cost of fund borrowed for the purpose of financing the construction of the asset and general borrowings which would have been avoided if expenditure the asset had not occurred. Okay. And also the cost of fund borrowed. Borrowing cost, yes, you can capitalize. After that, include the cost of funds borrowed for the, for the purpose of financing that construction. And, gen, and general borrowings, which would have been avoided. So this cost, you can capitalize it because otherwise, if you wouldn't have uh, not, uh, what do I say, avoid the construction, then you could have avoid the borrowing cost also. Understood? So it's directly related to that construction of the building, that borrowing cost that you are incurring. So what about the general borrowing cost? They are determined by applying a capitalization rate to an expenditure on that asset. There should be a rate and there should be an expenditure on the asset. So multiply that rate by the expenditure on the asset and find the borrowing cost okay so the weighted average carrying amount of the machine during the period what is the weighted average carrying amount of the machine first find that okay that means the borrowing cost obviously you're taking all the borrowing cost because all the borrowing cost only will be the amount of your machine the carrying amount of your machine because you're capitalizing so 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and divide by 4 We'll see. 2, 3, 4, 5. Wow, I, I actually like the sequence. It's in a order, right? 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll see here. This 2 million, the direct cost. Then, this is in Feb. After that, it will be 1 million in each subsequent month. From February onwards, it will be 1 month every year, month. It will increase by 1 million. So in March it will be 1. That means 2 plus 1, 3. After that it will be 3 plus 1 equals to 4. After that it will be 4 plus 1 equals to 5. Okay. Until the year end. It will be 1 million, 1 million. So that's how you add. And it will be 1 million more each month. So this for this is for Feb. 2 is for Feb. Then is for March, then is for April, then is for May. Four months. This is the borrowing period, okay? First to May. That means Feb, March, April, May. Four months. So you are taking 2, 3, 4, 5, divide by 4 because four months. You have to find the average, which is 3.5 million. This is the cost. Okay? And the rate they have given you as 9%. The capitalization rate. So what, 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 what should you do now? You know the cost, you know the rate. What should you do? Multiply. Multiply this 3.5 by 9%, but you have to take 4 months. Why? Because this 9% is annualized. It's per annum. You have to find it only for 4 months. So 3.5 into 9% into 4 divided by 12, which is 0.1. This is the total amount of borrowing costs that you have to capitalize. Okay? But here you have to explain. Here you are explaining. The total amount of borrowing cost to be capitalized is the weighted average carrying amount of the stadium multiplied by the capitalization rate. You are saying that you are multiplying and then you are showing also that multiplication. So you explain and then you do the calculation, which is 0.1 million. Now we are coming to the research and development. So according to IS38, same way, what IS38 says about research and ex development expenditure. Research expenditure does not give rise to probable economic benefit and therefore no intangible asset should be recognized. In short, the research expenditure will give will not give rise to any intangible asset. Therefore, no intangible asset should be recognized for this research expenditure. 
Okay, that means this research expenditure, you cannot capitalize it as a cost of asset. They, they are expenses. So you expense them to profit and loss, the 1 million research expenditure. Okay, coming to development. Development expenditure, yes, you can capitalize it as intangible asset, provided certain conditions are satisfied. Otherwise, that also will go as an expense. Okay, so this could be capitalized. If certain criteria are met, make sure that you know the criteria. What are the criteria? Do you remember? Yes, you can list some of the criteria. It must give rise to probable economic benefit. You must should, you must receive the benefit from incurring that cost. They must have sufficient resource to complete the development. The development should be completed. And expenditure that are incurred must be measurable also. If this conditions are satisfied, there are more actually. In fact, there are six criteria. But here they have given mention three, it's okay. If this criteria are met, yes, capitalize it. So assuming the criteria are met, see we don't know whether the criteria are met or not, okay? Because the case study does not say that. Whenever the case study does not tell you properly whether the criteria are met or not, you state this, okay? You when you're answering, just say assuming the criteria are met. Okay, even in your exam, you can write the, uh, this way. If the criteria are given to you as it is, then you can say they're satisfied or not. But here they didn't tell you. So assuming that the criteria are met, don't say assuming that the criteria are not met. Okay, always take the positive side. Assuming that the criteria are met, this 0 0.5 million expenditure should be capitalized as intangible asset. After you take it as intangible asset, what should you do? One step, don't forget that, amortization. Because intangible asset, you have to amortize also. So this asset should be amortized to profit and loss. That expense will go to profit and loss, amortization, right? Now we are coming to the SMA standard. Four marks for SMA standard. Here you will get the eight marks. Maybe one mark for in uh, this uh, research and the uh, one mark for development expenditure. Maybe for listing the criteria of development expenditure also another one mark. So let's say three marks out of eight is for research and development and the remaining five is for your borrowing cost. Now we are moving to SME standard four marks. Two marks here, two marks here. What does SME standard says about borrowing cost and research and development expenditure? Make sure that you separate uh, like this. Borrowing costs are always expense under SME. There is no option, nothing to capitalize because I told you they always simplified. Always expensed to the statement of profit or loss. So therefore, none of the borrowing costs incurred as a result of the construction can be capitalized. None. Very simple. Research and development. Keep it very short and uh, sweet because it's just for four marks. Okay, research and development. What does it say? They say that entity must recognize expenditure incurred internally on intangible asset, including all expenditure on both research and development. That means both research and development are expensed. You are not capitalizing development expenditure anymore. You don't have to meet the criteria for development to capitalize development expenditure. That is under IS 38. SME standard is very simple. Whether research or development, everything is expensed. Okay, so total one plus that 0 0.5, 1.5 million expense. This will be written to profit and loss. Now we are coming to this practical considerations, but we have to read the case study. Okay. One of the reasons why uh, why Whiteberg prepares his financial statements using SMS is because of the difficulties involved every time when UI finance standards is issued. So the directors believe that the practicalities and the financial statement implications of regularly implementing UI finance standards are overly onerous to an entity the size of this one. However, they may have to transition to full IFRS standard if it continues to grow in size. Definitely, once you reach that threshold, you surpass that uh, threshold. Okay, now you are an SME. Okay, due to your size or revenue or turnover or number of employees. Once you grow in size, you become big. You are no longer an SME that you cannot use SME standard, right, in the future. So they are thinking that in the future, you might have to, at one point, shift to full IFRS standard. Okay, so now because they are shifting, what are some practical considerations? It's not easy to shift things easily from one standard to another. There are some there are some problems and advantages that comes with it that you have to talk about. 
one are practical the other one is from the point of financial statement what impact it will have on the financial statement okay when you are shifting to new ifrs standard from sma standard for 10 marks so this also you have to divide like this you see 10 marks you are getting for practical consideration maybe 5 marks let's say and 5 marks for financial statement implications you have to divide like this okay and the next one is for 3 marks if you see is very short first time adaptation of IFRS standard will not touch that now first we'll finish with this practical consideration so 5 at least 5 practical considerations you have to give in 5 different paragraphs obviously okay so think what could be this thing one is when you implement a new accounting standard you have to prepare an impact assessment and project plan there should be a plan okay so when you are making a plan or you are making an impact assessment obviously there will be cost cost involved so they may need to spend money on training staff these are issues problems you have to train staff now earlier they were just doing sma standard now full life virus you have to train the staff or you have you even have to update or replace your system okay new process and controls may need to be developed and documented right this this are under one point only you're just explaining the same point you have to develop new controls now more uh, what do i say the controls has to be more strict now it has to be more enhanced okay and you have to document also so one issue is that training staff and all updating system and all one practical consideration is the second new accounting standard will contain new recognition new measurement disclosure requirements will change okay so because of this you have to show this as a communication you have to communicate this to the investor okay otherwise it will affect the investment decisions if you are not showing them so management should communicate this to the the, uh, the impact of a new standard to investors and other stakeholders so another thing is this communication to the stakeholders because if especially you have to communicate more if it results in lower profits or increased liabilities for example you are changing from sma standard to full ifrs standard then if that change leads to lower profit now and your liabilities are increased then definitely you have to communicate this to the stakeholders third what is the third this this line is with this okay that gap is there because uh, it came in a new page that's why this three lines are in one paragraph okay what is the next what is next it is relating to maximum debt level so bank agreements must uh, might specify that this is the maximum debt level of financial ratios based on the figure so when you're changing to the new financial reporting what happens it can affect those ratios your liquidity ratios might change or your gearing ratios might change you so in short you might breach the covenant fourth dividends could be affected okay because in many jurisdictions they they restrict that this is the amount of dividend that you can pay okay because maybe it is based on the accounting profit for example but when you are changing to the new ifrs standard maybe your profits might change or based on that your dividend also might change so because you are restricted by the uh, jurisdiction that you cannot give or pay out more than this dividend even if your profit now changes after changing to the new ifrs standard you are still restricted you understand so that's an issue so out of let's say how many one two three four four you have given 
and another more one more five you can even give more also six seven it's okay because 10 marks okay it's not that you should write equally equally five and five only you can write here six or seven and under financial statement implications three so it's fine but if you are not coming up with more points under practical considerations then writing five points is also enough but here in this answer they have included the one two two more extra okay seven points seven marks so the impact of adopting a new ifrs standard this should be communicated to an analyst some governments use information prepared under ifrs standard for statistical and economic plan the other thing is it is for the from from the point of government you might not think about this point okay it's okay if you are not coming up with this at least writing five four to five points is enough because you are getting marks for writing here also under this don't forget so don't just stick to five points that i will exactly have to get five points under this and five points under statement implications no it's fine you can get less or more than that but just i'm explaining you this point so in case if someone comes up with the last three points also in their answer at least they others will understand you know why this is in the answer because ultimately when you are studying from your vision kit solutions you will go through this answer also and you will be later will be no doubt how this point came this extra points so when government has to plan their budget how much tax they are going to charge what are the uh, how much they are going to spend they will base their decision on the information that they are going to receive that you are going to make under ifrs standard so that also will change then competitive advantage could be lost why because now you have to give extensive disclosure under uh, full ifrs you have to uh, disclose more then bonus scheme this may need to be reassessed so usually the list this last three points are not so common like you usually will not come up with this last three points so it's okay because the f the first few points are very common so always uh, when you're studying also study those points which are very common because it's easy to understand right and you will easily you will memorize also like you easily you will come up with the answer also something which is easy for example spend money on staff second you have to disclose more third your recognition will change then you have to communicate your debt ratios will change these things are very common but coming from the point of government competitive advantage bonus scheme these are less likely that's why you see in the list also they are given at the end but still examiner wants to show that even if some of the students come up with this last few points also they will get marks even though it's not very common to think about those points okay so bonus scheme may need to be reassessed because why new standard could affect the calculation of performance related pay exactly you might come more than this points also which is not there in the list it's okay you will still get marks but when you're doing self study it's very difficult for you to know or identify whether it's correct or not that's why it's always advisable to learn under a tutor who can mark your answer and give a feedback if you're writing answers other than that which is not then the answer and you want to be sure whether it's correct or not okay because you are not still qualified enough to you know mark those answers which is not there and uh, well you know whether it's correct or not you don't know you will be thinking it's correct but it might not be especially if that's why this triple a is very difficult triple a sbl for this type of paper you, you you need someone because usually the answers are very varying type right it varies a lot so yeah because bonus you are if it's related to some performance for example based on some profit your profit will change if you are going to full life or a stand new life or a stand so based on the change in profit your bonus also will get affected that also you have to now see reassess now we are coming to the financial statement implications okay so here you can give to as i can see according to this one three standards they have mentioned so i'm assuming seven points they are getting from here three marks they are getting from here that the way i have told you one is is 33 one is is1 one is is8 okay why is8 is8 is a very common this thing easily you will understand 
because there, there could be a change in accounting policy now or your estimates might change or some error might have taken place. Okay. Because whenever you're changing your new standard, remember recognition will change new recognition, new measurement and new disclosure requirements. That's why you have to, that means your accounting policies or estimates or errors, there will be some prior period error, this will change. Okay, so how do you account it for IAZ? Under IAZ, how do you account for this? Changes in accounting policy. If your accounting policy changes, what should you do? Retrospectively, apply, fully applied uh, retrospectively. What does it mean? Retrospectively means go in the past and change. As if from day one, you have been following the uh, new IFRS only. You have to go back and change the figure under the new IFRS uh, standard. You have to change the current and go back and change the past also. That is the meaning of retrospective. If it's an accounting policy. Okay. Because most of the time, more than the estimate and error, it is accounting policies that changes. Okay. That's why we are talking about accounting policies only specifically. Unless there are specific transitional provisions contained in UFRS being implemented. Unless there are specific transitional provisions contained in the new IFRS standards being implemented. Okay, maybe already it is inbuilt there that some provision has been made while you are trans, uh, transiting from the old IFRS to new IFRS. If it's there, that provision has already been there contained, then it's okay. Then you don't have to apply retrospectively for changes in accounting policy. Otherwise, you have to. Okay. Coming to next, one mark you will get for this IS8, another mark for IS1, another mark for IS33 marks. If you can come up with more financial statement implications, good. But I, what I would suggest is that uh, for this type of answer, looking at the nature, you will get more points under practical considerations than financial statement implications. Because if it was, other, the examiner would have included that in the answer. What are the other standards that might get affected? But mostly, yes, these three standards. IS8, IS1 and IS33. Okay. So in order to be on the safe side, better to follow what they have given. That means more points you have to write under considerations and, and under financial statement implications less. But ultimately total when you add, it should be equal to 10 points. 7 from here, 3 from here, so 10. Okay. Next IS1. This requires a third statement of financial position to be presented if the entity retrospectively applies an accounting policy. Third statement of financial position. If the entity retrospectively applies an accounting policy, restate the item or reclassify item. You might restate an item or reclassify. Maybe an item was reclassified as a current liability. For example, under the old. Now under new, it will be non current so you have to reclassify also and those adjustments wait, wait wait applies this one or reclassify item and those adjustments had a material effect on the information the statement of financial position at the beginning of the comparative period maybe adjustments might have material effect in the at the beginning of the comparative period okay so three third statement of financial position how third? How third? One currently from the day you have started preparing. Okay, under the new IFRS. Another one will be the retrospective. Go back and the previous one also under the new standard. Okay, if there's a change in accounting policy, retrospectively. So that will be second one. And what is the third one? I will give you a timeline to understand. Let's say this is 2014, your first uh, year when you are implying okay, or applying the new IFRS standard. Understood? 2014. Forget about month and date and everything. 2014, start of 2014. So 2014, you have to make one. Then let's say there is a change in accounting policy. Change in accounting policy, what do you have to do? 
retrospectively that means in the previous year you have to change so for 2013 also you have to make another set of financial statement under that second and comparative comparative means what you always need one set of comparative uh, information also that you can compare with this 2013 now so for that you have to go back to 2012 because comparative you need that means one year before so for two thousand, so this will be third so once again third, that's why third that's why they mentioned third statement of financial position you need three statement of financial position Okay. And obviously the explanation more about this timeline I have explained under IS1. Well. You can go back and always check. Finally comes IS33, very small standard. It's not very frequently asked also, but yes, it could be asked under this. Maybe as a standalone question, it might not be asked. But yes, IS33 can be asked as a part of a question like this, which is your earnings per share. This requires two types of EPS. One is basic, one is diluted. We all know that, right? We know. So to be adjusted for the impacts of it resulting from changes in accounting policy. Accounted for respect, uh, retrospectively in IS8 because the disclosure of the amount of any such adjustments. See now and earlier, what happened when you were an SME? Under SME, remember IS33 is omitted. SME standards under if you're a SME company, you cannot use IS33. It's not applicable for you. So that means in the beginning you're not using, now you're using. That's why they have mentioned specifically IS33. That's the reason why they have included it. Now it becomes applicable for you. So two types of APS. So this needs to be adjusted. Okay for the impact of adjustments resulting from changes in accounting policy now there's a change in accounting policy why before i will show, i will show it in a timeline before after no is33 it's not applicable yes is33 now you have right this is known as change in accounting policy before you don't have now you have it's an accounting policy changed okay so because of changes in accounting policy what did they told go back and change retrospectively understood retrospective that's why they have mentioned is 8 also along with this this is a change in accounting policy only that's why you have to adjust this changes in accounting policy always go back and change so you have to go back and change in the previous year also as if there was as if you are applying is 33 from day one understood and you have to uh, disclose this also the amount of any such adjustments okay a change in an accounting standard can change the carrying amount of an asset and liability which will have a deferred tax consequences also this is another thing maybe four marks okay accounting standard when you are changing what happens carrying amount of asset will change and liabilities also will change so because of that it will have a deferred tax consequences on the is12 so is12 yes four marks okay now okay we'll go to the marking scheme everything all one mark per point one mark per point so you understood right how the marks are divided next one is for three marks okay how are you going to get the three marks one mark from this paragraph another mark from this paragraph another mark from this three marks At the date of transition, what entity must do? For all this four, you are getting one mark only. What about the gain and losses? One mark. And what about this opening? At the opening, what are you doing? At the date of transition, what are you doing? After that, gain and losses. Because whenever you are transiting from one to one, there will be some gain or losses. Remember that. So these three things, these three things you have to talk, you are going to get the full three marks. Okay. I far as one says that entity must produce an opening state you have to prepare an opening statement of financial position ifrs1 says that first time when you're adopting ifrs 
in accordance with IFRS standard as at the date of transition. At the date of transition, you have to make an opening statement of financial position. What is this date of transition? It is the beginning of the earliest period for which an entity presents full comparative information under IFRS standard. In its first financial uh, IFRS standards, in its first financial term is produced using IFRS standards. Okay. What does it mean? Check this timeline again. From 2012, 13, 14. You decided that from 2014 you are going to this will be the date which will be your first set of financial statement first but this 2014 is not your date of transition you have to check when your comparative information will be there comparative information will be when when will be a comparative it will be from 2013 one year before right one year before it will be also from this date do this 2013 will be a date of transition. Understood? Because they told earliest. They told the date, the beginning of the earliest period for which an entity presents full comparative information. Understood? Not the date they actually start presenting their finance, first set of financial statements under IFRS standard. That is not known as date of transition. Okay. Now, at the date of transition, what they should do? Because see, when you are trans doing like that, date of transition, all the opening balances also you have to adjust, right? Opening balance because those opening balances you have to carry forward. It will become a closing balance. So you have to make sure that the opening balances are correct. Okay. Let's say. 2012 and 2013. 2012, you have been using old IFRS. Now you want to use new IFRS standard. But 2012, whatever the opening balances are there from 2012, you are bringing forward this year. You need to verify those and you have to adjust those. You have to change those, restate those opening balances. Understood? So that's why they talked about opening balances. Now, date of transition, these four things. It's there as it is from the textbook only. Okay. Don't memorize without understanding. Understand this and you can memorize. So re recognize all assets and liabilities that are required by IFRS standard now. Now under IFRS standard, if an asset misses the recognition, liabilities also can be recognized. Recognize all assets and liabilities. De-recognize all assets and liabilities that are not permitted by IFRS standard. Maybe under your role IFRS standard, yes, but now you cannot recognize it any more than de-recognize. Reclassify assets, liabilities, and equity in accordance with IFRS standard. Measure assets and liabilities in accordance with IFRS standard. So, what are the things? Recognize, de-recognize, reclassify, measure. Okay. You have to recognize also according to IFRS standard. You have to measure also according to IFRS standard. You have to de-recognize that are not permitted by IFRS standard. You have to reclassify according to IFRS standard. Now we are coming to gain and losses. Okay, when you are adopting to IFRS standard, what, what should you do with the gain and losses? At the date of transition. This should be recognized directly in the retained earnings. The gain and losses will be taken directly into the retained earnings. So that's it for this question and see you in the next question. And make sure that this areas which are not very popular like IFRS 1, it's IFRS SMEs, IS 23, IS 20. This area also you do questions on this and test your knowledge, test yourself on this areas as well. Okay. So till then take care and see you in the next question.